So, Mr. Atheist, do you think it is impossible for God to exist? Well, there are no absolutes, so I guess it is possible, if highly improbable. Ah, so you don't know anything. I didn't say that. You just said that you don't know anything. No, I most definitely did not say that. You said that there are no absolutes. So how do you know anything? There are no absolutes, right? How does that mean that I don't know anything? So obviously reason is your belief, your kind of religion. Why I don't exactly believe in it in a religious way, uh, it is a necessary presupposition. Yeah, you see, in my worldview, God is the only necessary presupposition. So how can you prove that reason is right? You can't, that's why it's called a presupposition. So you need reason in order to prove reason, right? So it's circular, which is unreasonable. Doesn't that at all bug you? As I just said, it's a presupposition. You see, I've just proven that your worldview is illogical. Now in my worldview, God is the presupposition that presupposes every other presupposition. So you just acknowledge that God does exist. I did not at all say that. Sure, every argument you can make presupposes God's existence. Because, you see, without God, we cannot understand the world at all. Therefore, by saying that God doesn't exist, you are actually saying that God does exist. Okay, I will not go on with this little charade. Um, in the aftermath of the uh, uh, debate, the so-called interview that uh, Eric Hovind, son of Kent Hovind, had with Thunderfoot at the recent rally, I came upon the uh, concept of presuppositional apologetics. At first I was a bit angry uh, and then I uh, started to think a bit about it and found it simply hilarious. I mean it's really, really great if you look into it. Um, it actually starts out in the, in the Bible in uh, I think Romans 1 verse 18 to 22 or something. And the idea is actually that you have to presuppose God in everything. Therefore, every argument that can ever be made presupposes the existence of God. Therefore, there can be no atheism. Okay. This, 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 this is Hobutsu. Hobutsu is obviously a pinkish, hyperactive, and rather friendly hamster. Of course, Hubutsu, did I call him? <laughs> Hubutsu is also invisible and untouchable, not located in time and space, uh, and cannot be shown by any senses at all. But Hubutsu is the necessary presupposition of everything. So, the moment you open your mouth, you acknowledge the existence of Hubutsu. Hubuntu. Sorry, Hubuntu. Um, now prove me wrong. Mm, you can do that. The problem is that you can do that with any worldview. Hubuntu, Christianity, Buddhism, what have you, Scientology, what have you. Um, what's really going on behind the scenes, I think, there is a thing called um, the Münchhausen Trilemma. The Münchhausen Trilemma states that uh, if you go back the chain of reasoning to the very, very end, or start actually, you are faced with a trilemma. You can say that the ultimate reason is itself not caused by anything, thereby posing an absolute, 
you can say that the ultimate reason is somehow causing itself, which is circular, or you can go for the infinite regress. If we go for the circular option, well, it's circular reasoning. We are doing the Münchhausen thing, which is unreasonable. Uh, if you pose an absolute, you cannot say why you were posing an absolute at this point. And if you go for an infinite regress, then you have no reason for anything because it just goes back endlessly forever and ever and ever. So, uh, the uh, presuppositional apologist will opt for one of the three options of the Münchhausen trilemma, namely posing an absolute, God. Then go on to say that uh, the other person obviously poses some unreasoned presuppositions, which is always the case. And then go on to say that therefore the apologist is right. What he will not say is that he opted for one of three equally impossible options and that this is a presupposition. So in fact, the apologist is presupposing, assuming stuff, but not acknowledging that this is an assumption, while at the same time arguing that the other person does assume stuff and is therefore wrong. This is inherently dishonest and disingenuous. And I would argue that uh, whenever there is a camera or an audience involved, they are action, actually not arguing in order to convince the atheist in front of them, but they are in fact talking to the audience. Um, and if you combine this with uh, arguments from authority, arguments ad populum, arguments ad hominem, it can become a rather potent rhetorical mixture that might actually end up converting people. And as I said, it is so dishonest. And at the same time, it is ridiculously easy to th see through that. And talking about reason, yes, it is true that we cannot justify reason itself except by way of using reason. It is circular. Yes, it is thinkable, though not, it is imaginable, not precisely thinkable, but it is imaginable that the world outside the human mind is unreasonable and that all our reasoning is wrong. What you cannot do, obviously, is make a reasonable argument for that being the case. Uh, in every sentence you say, you have to presuppose reason if you want the sentence to be reasonable. It is just the necessary precondition of our mind. There is no escaping. And no, this is not a belief that I chose. Um, well, challenge, show me that it's wrong. Show me that you can, show me by reason that you can reason without reason. It doesn't work. Sure, it is possible that the world is unreasonable and ultimately, un ultimately unintelligible. However, if you start from this point, if you start from the assumption that the world is unreasonable and that there is somehow uh, an absolute arbiter of reasoning who is himself unreasonable, um, then not only do you end up not being able to justify anything, which would roughly be the same in the case of the circular reasoning with reasoning, but on top of that, you're doing two things. You're adding an uh, unnecessary metaphysical entity, which is unelegant, obviously. 
and uh, you cannot justify why you use that entity instead of another entity. And second, um, you are in, in effect giving up on reasonable talk with another person. Um, and that's historically actually the reason why presuppositional apologetics was invented. Uh, uh, presuppositional apologetics was invented by a Dutch theologian uh, by the name of Cornelius van Til um, as an answer to Thomistic apologetics, uh, the classical, traditional, mainly Catholic apologetics, uh, which relies heavily on reason and tries to uh, have a common ground between believers and non-believers in the form of reason and then tries to establish from that from that, from that common ground that God does exist and obviously it fails. Fantil went the opposite way. And if you uh, look at the circular logic involved in the Christian faith itself, uh, God exists therefore the Bible is true, the Bible tells us that God exists therefore God exists and so on. Uh, it makes some kind of weird sense except it is highly uncanny. Um, it effectively closes the mind for any discussion. It is a totally closed worldview. Um, if you care for consistency, then starting from reason is the method, and starting from from from. Uh, scientific skepticism actually is the method that gets you the farthest okay um, and this is not an absolute statement by the way if you can show me a better method hooray I will happily go for it I just haven't found one and I can't think of one and obviously most of the world's most intelligent people tend to think the same thing in this regard Actually, thank you for that, uh, Mr. Hovind. I rarely ever laughed so hard than when I was looking at one of your videos where you explain presuppositional apologetics to a Christian audience. I think I will link it uh, down below. Okay, friends. Um, have fun and my usual advice, think twice.